So as we come to the conclusion of this course, it's important to look back at educational technology as a whole, um, examining some of the criticisms that exist of educational technology, but also where it fits within the research field that we define as ed tech. So society is being impacted by technology. We all understand that. But it's also being impacted by educational technologies. And educational technologies have a very, um, have their own place within this impact that we need to understand and be able to incorporate into our own teaching and learning processes, but also into wider societal processes. Now, there is a range of views as to what EdTech is. Um, and we're going to look in particular at a systems view of educational technology. And then finally wrap things up with looking at a range of criticisms of educational technology. While this course has generally presented educational technology in a positive perspective, which is one of the cultural aspects of ed tech, um, there are valid criticisms of educational technology. And no study of educational technologies and the creation of educational technologies would be complete without also addressing some of these criticisms and how we can try to alleviate these criticisms or avoid them as we develop educational technologies into the future. So what is educational technology and its impact upon society? Now, known as EdTech, it's really an attempt to design, develop and use technology to achieve various outcomes, um, particularly in education. And this depends upon the level of education and the stakeholders within education that are utilizing educational technologies. For some, it's about improving retention rates of students. For others, it's around improving student learning or the effectiveness of teachers or reducing costs or increasing access to education and a range of other aspects. But technology is essentially a tool that can be applied to the solution of problems. And educational technologies are also essentially tools that can be applied to the solution of educational problems, or at least problems that relate to education in some way. So in some ways, the, the strengthening of educational technology can be seen as a response to the um, greatly increased costs of education, particularly in higher education in the United States, where the costs are becoming exorbitant. But they can also be seen as a shift from um, governmental to free market oversight of education, where allowing commercial interests to dictate where education goes and the priorities in education is seen by some in market-driven economic perspectives as more effective than in bureaucratic governmental perspectives aimed at social good and social um, reform agendas. It can also be seen as a general belief in society that technology is a way of advancing the future um, where things can be packaged and automated and delivered in sort of pre-established um, sets. And we can do the same with education, that it can be pre-packaged and automated and delivered to students and they can work through it as they would going to a fast food um, store. So again, it takes a different philosophical perspective of what the educational process has been in the past but what it may be evolving into in the future. And there's also a general technocentric belief in society that technology can solve our problems, be they climate change or overpopulation, that there are technological solutions to these large scale intrinsic problems. And education having its own large scale intrinsic problems um, may also be delivered from these problems through the use of technology. 
So these general perspectives are in, infusing their, um, their worldview and promoting the use of educational technology in society for good and potentially for bad. So share to teams an example where ed tech or general technology has shaped society or is in the process of shaping society. So within this view of education and educational technologies, we can take a wider systems view where we look at the various interacting systems involved in educational technologies rather than just looking at the technology itself or some small aspect of impact from that technology. But technology does have a difficult place. It's, it's essentially new, so it's not very well established compared to many other disciplines. And educational technology is not alone in that because one of the problems is we don't really have a clear definition of not just what technology is, but also what educational technology is. Um, as we started this course, we started looking at the broad definition of technology being things including language and fire, um, all of these different aspects that we've had throughout our history, rather than just being more recent modern technologies such as the internet or the automobile or things of that nature. So our con concept of what technology is needs to be quite broad. Now, in the main, as we look at technology from an educational perspective, we're coming from a social science lens on what education and educational technology is. But there are other lenses, particularly from an engineering, scientific, te technocratic perspective. Technology and educational technology is very much around tools. It's around constructed objects or processes that will solve problems. But from education, we tend to look a bit more broader and see that within a context and around various interactions of social forces and, and groups and students and teachers and um, learning systems and processes all having an impact around the actual physical tools. Um, so educational technology is seen much broader than just the technology itself. It's all of the other associated aspects that exist around that educational technology that are just as important as the actual tool. So this leads us into the idea that technology and educational technologies can have values associated with them. They are value laden. Um, firstly, the technology often reflects the values of those who have created it and used it. Um, <coughs> how we utilize the internet is very much a determiner of the creators of that. In the early days of the internet, for example, it was seen as a very much of a democratic process where it was involved with the, sh the free sharing of information. And that was very much the mantra of the internet, that information wants to be free. Um, that the whole point of the internet was around the free and open sharing of knowledge and information to make the world a better place. Over time, uh, various commercial interests have reshaped uh, the general perception of what the internet is, and it's very much now seen as a platform for commerce and for society and even for government to manage processes and to um, mirror many of our existing um, institutions in society through digital means. Quite different from the initial um, utopian perspectives of what the internet was going to be about. So educational technology, in this case the internet as a tool and also being used for education, can be very much shaped by the values of those who are driving that or implementing that technology. Now generally Technology is also seen in an optimistic perspective, that we have technological advances, that things are improving as a result of technology. 
Now, that's not always the case, particularly around some military technologies and things of that nature. But in the main, that's the general prevalent view around technology. And that's a value laden perspective in itself. Um, the third one is also around that in that we see technology and the technology advances as ways that can improve life. Um, but one of the key aspects of that is that as we invest in new technologies as solutions to problems, we have a, only a certain amount of resources. Now, a good example is in education. Um, buying computers for use in, in the classrooms means we have less money to employ teachers. So we have to have fewer teachers, but we get more computers. That again is a very value laden judgment as to where resources should be expended. And it has real world impacts. Um, so making decisions to engage with technology are not made completely devoid of any impact. They will have impact in terms of budgetary allocations and um, resource allocations, or even just focus of effort and interest um, away from other areas. That may also be quite valuable, if not even more valuable. Okay, so the inst institutionalization of modern technology also allows it to be um, the the direction of where things are going are uh, being decided on by large organizations and institutions and indeed more and more by companies and commercial interests rather than by the users of the technology um, we tend to have to adopt our practices to whatever the capabilities are of the technology that is provided to us rather than defining what we want to do and having the technology created to achieve what we want. Um, we don't tend to have enough leverage to be able to do that. Now, certain organizations and instances that can happen, happens a little bit in higher education around learning management systems, where there is enough um, pressure able to be brought to bear to have things change to meet the needs of an organization rather than um, just adopting the product that's being provided. But in the main, that's not um, possible. It does happen a little bit on large scale between competitive products and societal um, interests around different solutions. Um, we've seen various, uh, the browser wars was very much around different um, ways of searching for information on the internet between um, hierarchical um, menu driven structured um, lists of options versus um, searching by terms and Yahoo which is very much was very much around the search structure where you um, like in a library you would go in and you would search various categories and terms and come out with your results versus Google's approach which was just putting in um, keywords and having search responses returned as a result of those keywords. That was fought for a couple of decades and the keyword search option was the essentially the choice by society and we went down that pathway. So society can still exert some influence over these decision-making processes, but very much it's around what the large organizations and, and companies provide and then we can sort of make some choices um, based upon what they've decided to offer us. So essentially, in summary then, much of the products of technology are the expressions of individuals and the cultural values of the designers. Um, now ideally that will change as we have a more educated populace around technology, but technology always keeps moving forward and it's always difficult to keep up with that and have a population that can actually guide and direct what happens around technology and around educational technologies rather than being responsive to what's been produced by a few. 
So there is this idea we need a technology of technologies or a technology of educational technologies um, where the emphasis is more on the mental processes and products of learning rather than on the gimmickry of particular technologies um, that the processes are adaptive and systematic and material making and transforming and serve human purposes rather than commercial interests and that we have an emphasis on environmental social and intellectual influences rather than on commercial interests and influences um, so this is sort of like a utopian mantra to try to have educational technology serve the greater good rather than serve commercial interests hasn't got very far um, but there are some attempts to try to frame what happens in educational technology around a more positive direction okay so formally defining educational technology has always been a complex problem um, because technology by its is always evolving and as a tool it's so it's so inter interrelated with so many other fields um, even with education we've got stuff related to um, social sciences we've got stuff related to artificial intelligence stuff related to data systems um, and it's worse in other areas um, say in avionics when you've got stuff related to how planes work and all the rest but also related to artificial intelligence and database systems and lots of other different um, components that are quite different to aviation or any other particular field that you want to talk about so actually talking about what is technology in a particular context or what is educational technology in a particular context is fraught with difficulties because it's so interspersed with so many other fields but it is important to try to define what educational technology is um, so one approach is to look at it in terms of systems and systems assume that there are going to be lots of interconnected interrelated um, elements with other systems so it's taking the complexity not as a negative but as a positive in framing what educational technology is so we still have the focus on the physical educational technology um, designed to assist teaching and learning but around that we have all the other intersecting other elements of artificial intelligence and database systems and um, psychology psychological systems and economic systems all interrelating with the educational technology focus um, and these folk, these interrelated systems can be around the development of the educational technology and the designing of it, but also around evaluating it and how its effectiveness is and all the other different aspects of education. And it provides us with a philosophical and holistic orientation whereby we can look at the educational technology through all of these different lenses that are related to the systems involved with the educational technology and that gives us a better understanding of how that educational technology interacts with the world and provides us with a, a broader understanding and insight into its its place within society rather than just being as a tool that we explore as a separate entity from society <coughs> okay so all of this allows us to draw together um, various views of ed tech and how it impacts upon society economically um, socio-culturally and educationally and it allows us to um, examine the impact of educational technologies much more broadly so we still have certain goals around problem solving with educational technologies and we need to design develop and evaluate various human and mechanical resources efficiently and effectively in order to facilitate and leverage all the aspects of learning and guide change agency and transformation of educational systems and practices in order to contribute to influencing change in society so that's the fundamental um, systems orientated definition of educational technology so we're still trying to enact change 
through an educational technology, but we're looking at how that change is system-wide um, and societal-wide. So not just how it might affect um, the use in your classroom with your students, but how does that educational technology affect society as a whole? So share to teams some definition you have of what educational technology is. If you had to explain educational technology to your great aunt, how would you describe it? Okay, so while educational technology has all of these wonderful potential benefits for society, there is also always potential negative impacts. And there are a range of criticisms of educational technology. So there's a number of um, readings I've provided you and the key one to look at is, um, or two key ones, one is a critique by Greg Kianzi and also by Audrey Waters, um, her 100 worst EdTech debacles of the decade, which goes through and looks at a whole range of educational technologies, many of the ones that we've looked at in this course, and looks at their negative impact, how they have had um, unintended consequences in the main, I would hope, um, that have produced outcomes that would not be considered desirable. Um, so have a look at those and share to teams one personal example of an educational technology that hasn't reached the potential that you had originally hoped it would do so. Um, look at the other range of educational technology failures and difficulties that have occurred over the last um, decade or so. And we'll discuss these further in the tutorials.